بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد <coughs> So brothers uh, we reached this chapter um, last week and we stopped there so we'll begin from where we left off uh, this chapter is quite long so um, what we'll do is to help us understand uh, this chapter we'll go through half of it it's split in two so we'll go through half of it uh, today and inshallah next Friday we'll go through the other half so uh, we'll continue then so the Sheikh um, um, continued and he we reached uh, this chapter here Al Wala Al Wala Al Bara'u and um, <clears throat> we'll just read the Arabic like we normally do and then uh, we will translate um, what the Sheikh is saying uh, to help us understand what is being said <clears throat> so the Sheikh continues and he says Al Wala Al Bara'u الثالثة أن من أطاع أن من أطاع الرسول ووحد الله لا يجوز له موالاة من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كان أقرب قريب. So um, the Sheikh starts off and he says al wala wal bara and and I will get to know what that means in more detail as we work through this chapter. Uh, but just as a starter for us to help us to get started, uh, al wala means allegiance or loyalty. And al bara is you freeing yourself from something. So, uh, just to help us understand what that means, because that's why general uh, al wala huna here is um, allegiance and, and, and loyalty to the Muslims, to Allah and His Messenger, and to the Muslims. And the opposite of that is al bara, and that is freeing uh, freeing yourself from those who oppose Allah and the Messenger and the Muslims. I will get to know a bit more about this. <clears throat> Uh, as we go through the chapter. So then the Shaykh says, and thirdly, a thalitha, thirdly, he says that whoever uh, is obedient to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and who singles out Allah in all of his worship, singles out Allah, and is upon Tawheed, then, and it's not, it's not appropriate, or it's not obligatory upon him, or it's not permissible for him to help and support Help, love and support those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, who stand in the way and oppose Allah and His Messenger. Even if it was somebody who is, your, is a very close relative, let's put it that way. Even if it was somebody who was a very close relative to you, if they were opposing Allah and the Messenger and were upon this way, uh, opposing the deed of Allah and opposing Allah and His Messenger, then it's not you're not able to have that love from your heart for them and we'll, we'll understand this in a bit more detail as we go through it uh, we won't read this uh, paragraph that's from the last chapter it's just amalgamated here so the shaykh he continues and he says هذه مسألة الولاء والبراء وهي تابعة للتوحيد من حقوق التوحيد الولاء لأولياء الله والبراء من أعداء الله والموالاة والولاء بمعنى واحد والولاء يراد به المحبة بالقلب ويراد به المناصرة والمعاونة ويراد به الإرث والأقل في الديات في, ال... في الديات. <coughs> so we'll just stop there. So uh, what the Sheikh is saying here he says so this affair of um, الولاء والبراء and allegiance and freeing oneself of those who oppose uh, the Muslims. Or having allegiance and love for the Muslims, these are two opposite terms, right? So he says it is it's what follows Tawheed or what's related to Tawheed here, the Tawheed. And he also mentions he says so it's from the rights of Tawheed, this Al Wala, for example. So having allegiance, loyalty, and love for the All Ya of Allah, right? We understand that for the All Ya of Allah, and um, freeing ourselves. And disassociating ourselves from the enemies of Allah. 
And then the Sheikh mentions, he says, he mentions two terms. He says, Al Muwalat Wal Wala. Uh, he says that these two words they mean the same thing. So, you know, you might be reading another book or you may come across another um, speech or discussion. You might hear these two terms, but they mean the same thing. So then the Sheikh says, he says, Wal Wala, what's meant by this is love in the heart. So he starts with this. So he says, uh, what's meant by wala is love in the heart, having love in the heart. And also what is meant by it is supporting and aiding as well. Supporting and aiding something, supporting and aiding. And it's also what is meant from this word as well, because it comes with different meanings um, uh, and different contexts, you see. So uh, in our context, we're looking at love, support and aiding. But he also mentions extra benefits for us. So he says it also means... Um, for example, uh, the wealth that is associated or inheritance or wealth that's associated with, for example, blood money. So uh, we're aware of that. For example, uh, somebody accidentally, uh, you know, a manslaughter, for example, right? Or it kills somebody. And if the the guardian from that family, for example, uh, accepts that, they'll accept the blood money and, and you know, they'll excuse the person uh, without him having the death penalty or whatever the crime, the penalty for the crime is, then, you know, uh, there's uh, that this word as well is associated with with this kind of uh, or in this context as well. So um, there's different meanings to this word, but uh, we're focusing on the one mentioned earlier. So the Sheikh continues says, "For Muslimu yuali awliya Allah bi ma'na anahu bi anahu yahsur mahabbatahu ala awliya Allah wa yunasirahum. For Muslim yakunu ma al Muslimin baadhum awla bi baadin." كما قال تعالى وأولو الأرحام بعضهم أولى ببعض في كتاب الله. That's from سورة الأنفال which we look at the translation in a second. فالتعاقل في ديات الخطأ يكون بين المسلمين وهو ما يسمى بالتكافل. كل هذا يدخل في الولاء فلا يكون الولاء بين بين مسلم وكافر والمحبة والنصرة والميراث وال والعقل وولاية النكاح وولاية القضاء إلى غير ذلك فلا يكون ذلك بين مسلم وكافر وإنما يكون هذا بين المسلمين لقوله تعالى ولن يجعل الله للكافرين على المؤمنين سبيلا That's from Surah An-Nisa verse 141 هكذا يجب أن يتميز المؤمنين عن الكفار فلا يجوز لمن وحد الله so um, what the Sheikh says, he says, so for the Muslim, he says, so for the Muslim, the Muslim, he protects and aids and helps and has love for uh, the awliya of Allah, right? And with the meaning that he, uh, he constricts or he constricts his love uh, for the awliya of Allah and he helps them. So the Muslim, in this situation, he's uh, he's he's with the Muslimin. So when we're talking about Oli Allah, we're talking about the Muslimin. So uh, he's the Muslim is with the Muslimin. He's with the Muslims. So, uh, uh, some of them, part, uh, each uh, each of the Muslims help each other. They support one another. They have love for one another. And then the Sheikh mentions uh, uh, part of ayah from Surah Al Anfal. So if you look at the translation of that, it will help us understand as well. So if we go to the translation of the ayah. Um, so the Sheikh mentions here, uh, or uh, the translation from here is about kindred by blood. So kindred by blood are nearer to one another regarding inheritance in the decree ordained by Allah, where Allah is all knower of everything. And then the Sheikh continues and he says, so for example, um, in in regards uh, in matters of, for example, blood money, um, when uh, a Muslim you know makes an error. You know, obviously, is is by error, and you know, there's you know, one Muslim in this situation on one side of this issue will we may accept the blood money and excuse the person, for example. You know, that's one example. He also mentions says, and this is what's called a takaful, and uh, that's basically um, in English um, best way to say is like obviously vouching for one another, vouching for one another. So the Sheikh says all of this, it, it, it's it, it it's. Uh, it's part of al-wala, yeah, having love, yeah, and it, because it comes under supporting, helping one another, and all this kind of thing, yeah. 
So, so the Sheikh says, so this, this wala, or helping and supporting one another and having love for one another, this is between the Muslims only. And it's not, it can't, it's, it's something that is separate. So it, you can't, if you're a Muslim and you know somebody who's a disbeliever, for example, not a Muslim, you can't have wala for him. It's not possible. Um, and so the Sheikh says, and having love and help and support and, you know, all, and uh, inheritance and all of these kinds of affairs, which talked about even marriage in terms of marriage as well. Um, and, you know, judgments and all these sort of things that concern the Muslims. He says, the, this is between the Muslims and it's not, it can never be between a Muslim and a, and a non-Muslim, a disbeliever, a kafir. And he says, uh, so he, and then he continues and he says, <clears throat> So this happens between the Muslims, as we as we mentioned, uh, and the Sheikh uh, mentions another ayah here for us to help us understand further. So this ayah comes from Surah An Nisa, and if we go to Surah An Nisa, verse hundred and forty-one, uh, we'll see what's being meant here. So let's just go to the part of the ayah that the Sheikh was quoting. So it's here, Allah will judge between you all on the day of resurrection and never will Allah grant to the disbelievers a way to tri triumph over the believers. And you can just go, you can go back to the translation and have a look at that later on as well if you need to remind yourselves. <clears throat> then the Sheikh continues and so he says, so he goes like this, it's important for us to distinguish, you know, you know the differences here, the, the, the differences here between the Muslims and the non-Muslims, you know, uh, where the you know where where the boundaries lie. So he says it's not permissible for whoever opposes Allah. Uh, 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 sorry. So he says it's not permissible for whoever um, uh, worships singles Allah out in worship and obeys a messenger that he um, loves and supports and aids those who oppose Allah and His messenger. And there will come uh, um, an ayah from the Quran uh, uh, in the next page or two, uh, which uh, clarifies all of this. Uh, and the Sheikh is going to explain that as well for us. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, just hold on if you're not having if you're having trouble understanding, and it will make it clear, inshallah. <clears throat> so then the Sheikh continues and he says, "Wal muhadat ma'naha an yakun al insana fi janibin, or an yakun al insanu fi janibin." والله ورسوله والمؤمنون في جانب ويكون المحاد في جانب القفار هذه هي المحادة. so then the sheikh explains what does you know محادة um, mean or you know from the ayah we mentioned earlier on as well or the word we mentioned had Allah ورسول and he says it's like this so he says it's uh, a person it's like for example a person being on on one side right on one side Right and and Allah and the Messenger of Allah and the Muslims being on the other side, and he says he goes and he says the, uh, this uh, opposition or hatred or opposition or going away from uh, uh, the uh, the Muslims, for example. So if the the one who goes to the side of of, of the disbelievers, then this is the uh, a person who is muhad or fills in that category. So if somebody is clear to us anyway that. It's somebody who opposes Allah and his messenger and the Muslims. <clears throat> and then the Shaykh continues and says, قوله ولو كان أقرب قريب أي نسبا فإذا كان قريبك محادا لله ورسوله فيجب عليك محادته ومقاطعته ومن كان وليا لله ورسوله وجب عليك أن تحبه وتواليه لو كان لو كان بعيدا من النسب عنك ولو كان عجميا أو أسود أو عجميا أو أسود أو أبيض أو أحمر يجب عليك أن تواليه وأن تحبه سواء كان سواء كان من بلدك أو من أقصى الشرق أو من أقصى الغرب قال تعالى والمؤمنون والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض أي بينهم المحب المحبة والتناصر والتعاون وبينهم الألفة هذا بين المؤمنين. so then um, the sheikh continues and he says even if it is a very close relative like the closest of relatives to you 
you know, in terms of, you know, you know, being a relative, a cousin, for example. He says, so he says, if this, let, let's say you, one of your cousins, very close cousins, right? Let's just use it as an example. One of your cousins um, is in opposition to Allah and his, and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then it's obligatory upon you to um, cut this person off because of what what's with them in terms of opposing the Prophet Sallallahu and opposing Allah. And then the Shaykh says, and whoever is a is a wali in Allah and and, uh, and of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it's obligatory upon you that you love that person, aid them and support them. From the Muslims who you know the Muslims essentially here love Allah, love the Messenger, then it's upon us like if we know somebody you know, for example, you know, tries his best, you know, following the Quran, following the Sunnah, you know, trying his best, sincere person, we should aid and help that person, support them wherever we can. And the Sheikh says, even if it's somebody who is far away from your your lineage, you know, he's not even part of your lineage or clan or tribe or whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. And even if it's a, a foreign, foreign person or whether it's a black person or a white person or a red person with you know different skin complexions it says it's obligatory to aid and support them and love them and to love them and it says even if it was uh, even if uh, it's a person from your land or whether he's from the far east or the far west you know and, and then he, uh, the, the sheikh quotes this ayah for us to help us understand uh, and he says and uh, you mentioned this ayah which you just read with Surah Tawbah verse 71. So if you go to Surah Tawbah verse 71 and we'll read the whole ayah. So um, the believers, men and women are all yah, helpers, supporters, friends and protectors of one another. They enjoin on the people al-ma'roof, i.e. Islamic monotheism and all that Islam orders want to do and forbid people from al-munkar, i.e. polytheism and disbelief. Of all kinds and all that Islam has forbidden, they perform a salat, iqamat a salat, and give zakat and obey Allah and His Messenger. Allah will have His mercy on them. Surely Allah is Almighty and uh, all wise. So we can understand that there. That's very clear, actually, um, <clears throat> for us. <clears throat> so you know there has to be love between you know when the old yeah, wali is, is another Muslim. You know he's trying his best. He's sincere. You know you got nothing else. Then you know. You help that person, you help them, you help one another. Muslims, you help one another, aid one another, support one another, and that which is good, of course. <clears throat> and then um, we'll just go back because this point here, it's related to this ayah here, which uh, I mentioned earlier on. So let's read that. <clears throat> and the main evidence, the main evidence is this ayah here from Surah Al Mujadila, verse 22. This is the main evidence for Al Wala. Wal Bara, this chapter, um, and the Sheikh's quoted it here, he's mentioned it here, so um, we will read it now uh, in the order. So it says, and the evidence is his speech, the uh, speech of his Most High. لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وأيدهم بروح منه ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه أولئك حزب الله ألا إن حزب الله هم المفلحون. So if you go to this ayah, it's very long, but it explains everything in terms of this topic today, the subject that the Sheikh is going through and explaining to us. So that is Surah Al-Mujadila, and if you go to Surah Al-Mujadila and read that, we'll understand. <clears throat> you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will not find any people who believe in Allah on the last day, making friendship with those who oppose Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though they were their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their kindred people. For such he has written faith in their hearts and strengthened them with ruh i.e. proofs, light and true guidance from himself and we will admit them to gardens of uh, gardens paradise under which rivers flow to dwell therein forever 
Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. They are the party of Allah. Verily, it is a party of Allah that will be the successful. Or that will be successful. <clears throat> so, so that's very clear there. And so the Shaykh is going to break this down for us now, bit by bit. So uh, if you have uh, access to translation of the Quran, uh, uh, you should uh, reference this ayah here, Al-Mujadila, verse 22, uh, because the Shaykh is going to be explaining it. So it'll be useful for you to refer back to it while we go through the explanation. So the Shaykh says, says, قوله تعالى لا تجد هذا خطاب للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أي لا يقوى هذا ولا يكون موجودا أبدا أن يكون مؤمن مؤمن بالله ورسوله يحب الكفار فإن 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 أحبهم فإنه ليس بمؤمن ولو كان يدعي ذلك so the Sheikh is explaining now. So the first part of this ayah, the long ayah that we read, La Tajidu, what does it mean? So he says that this is uh, Allah speaking to the messenger directly. He's saying, and he's saying that you won't find. So he says you won't find. So uh, it won't occur. It won't happen. And it won't, it, it won't, it won't be there ever. This situation won't be there that you, f you find a mu'min, you find a believer. In Allah and His Messenger, loving the kufar, you will never find this. It's not possible. Um, yeah, it's not possible. So if if a person loves them, the kufar, the disbelievers, for indeed he is not a mu'min, he's not a believer, even though he claims to be. So that's quite clear for us. And then the Sheikh brings. Um, um, uh, uh, and um, some poetry here, some poetry, two lines of poetry, um, or four lines there. For uh, well, two lines are separated by halves, yeah. So the the, the two lines of poetry. Um, so um, from uh, Ibn Al Qayyim, rahimahullah, in his book Al Kafiya to Shafia. So we will we'll read that. So the Sheikh quotes this, and he says, "Atuhibu wada al Habibi tadai, hubban lahu ma zaka fi imkani, wa kaza tuadi jahidan ahbabahu." أين المحبة يا أخ الشيطاني. so um basically meaning here that is do you is uh, do you love uh um so in I try to put this as easy as possible or trying to explain as easy or translate it in a, a easily understandable format um do you love the enemies of of the Prophet Sallallahu and that you claim to have love for him is that possible and 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 then it says here uh, where is the love where is your true love so where is the true love if you're saying that you love the prophet sallallahu but then you 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 support and help and you have uh, love for the kufar then where is your love for uh, you know for the prophet sallallahu uh, you know for allah and the prophet sallallahu Ya Akhir Shaitani, O brother of the Shaitan. So that's quite stern at the end. Um, but we'll we get the gist of what's being said here. And all of that that we've discussed up until now, uh, um, uh, we can extract all those meanings from uh, these lines of poetry here. So inshallah, that, that's clear um, for us. So the Shaykh says, فَهَذَا لَا يُمْكِنُ أَبْدًا أَنْ يُحِبَّ الْكُفَارِ يَقُولُ أنا أحب أنا أحب الله ورسوله لقوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا عدوي وعدوكم أولياء تلقون إليهم بالمودة إلى قوله تعالى قد كانت لكم أسوة حسنة في إبراهيم والذين معه إذ قالوا لقومهم إن براء منكم ومما تعبدون من دون الله كفرنا بكم وبداب uh, 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 Halim. <clears throat> so 
لما تبين له أنه عدو الله. So um, the Sheikh here is saying so therefore he says it's not possible ever. It's not possible. It's impossible. It's impossible that um, uh, that uh, uh, one loves uh, uh, one has love for the disbelievers of kuffar and then he says I love Allah and the Messenger. Uh, uh, and and then he, uh, the Sheikh quotes um, uh, a few verses here. We'll go through them now. And these verses are from Surah Al Mumtahina. Uh, so if we go to them, Surah al uh, the first four verses, we'll read all of them. O you who believe, take not my enemies and your enemies, i.e. disbelievers and polytheists, etc., as friends showing affection towards them, while they have disbelieved in what has come to you of the truth, i.e. Islamic monotheism, this Qur'an and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and have driven out the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and yourselves from your homeland. Because you believe in Allah, your Lord, if you have come forth to strive in my cause and to seek my good pleasure, then take not these disbelievers and polytheists, etc., as your friends. You show friendship to them in secret, while I am all aware of what you conceal and what you reveal. And whosoever of you Muslims does that, then indeed he has gone far astray, away from the straight path. Should they gain the upper hand over you, they would behave to you as enemies, and stretch forth their hands and their tongues against you with evil, and their desire that you should disbelieve. Neither your relatives nor your children will benefit you on the day of resurrection against Allah. He will judge between you, and Allah is all seer of what you do. Indeed, there has been an excellent example for you in Ibrahim, and those with him, when they said to their people, Verily, we are free from you, and whatever you worship besides Allah, we have rejected you. And there has started between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you until you believe in Allah alone. Accept the saying of Ibrahim to his father, Verily I will ask for forgiveness from Allah for you, but I have no power to do anything for you before Allah. Our Lord, in you alone we put our trust, and to you alone we turn in repentance, and to you alone is our final return. And then the Shaykh mentions another ayah, from Surah Tawbah, which is related to what we're talking about here. So let's go there. And it's verse 114. We'll read that. And Ibrahim's invoking of Allah for his father's forgiveness was only because of a promise he, Ibrahim, had made to him, his father. But when it became clear to him, Ibrahim, that he, his father, is an enemy to Allah, he, disassoci he, dis he disassociated himself from him. Verily, Ibrahim was Al-Awwah has 15 different meanings, but the correct one seems to be that he used to invoke Allah with humility, glorify him and remember him much. So that's the translation. And was forbearing. And that's from Tafsir Al-Qurtubi. Tafsir Al-Qurtubi. So we can see how that is related with what we're talking about. And the Sheikh mentions here, just the last part of this paragraph here, it says, and this is the way of Ibrahim. And he freed himself and dissociated himself from his father who was the closest to him. As we mentioned earlier on, the Sheikh said, even if it is Akrab al Karib, the closest of closest relatives of people to you. He says, when and, and, and Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, dissociated and freed himself of his father when he realized that when Allah told him that he was the enemy of Allah. So that's quite clear for us, right? So let's continue. <clears throat> ودلت ودلت الآيات أيضا على أن محبة الكفار تتنافى مع الإيمان بالله واليوم الآخر إما مع أصله أو مع كماله لكن إن كانت محبتهم معها تأييد تأييد ل تأييدا أو تأييد ل لمذهبهم وكفرهم فهذا خروج عن الإسلام أما إن كان مجرد محبة من غير مناصرة لهم فهذا يعتبر منقصا أو منقصا للإيمان أو منقصا للإيمان وقسما أو وفسقا ومضاعفا للإيمان أو مضيفا للإيمان. So then the Sheikh mentions he says so these these verses of the Quran that we've read up until now they show us um, uh, that the love of the of the disbelievers it, it negates uh, the person's iman. 
um, and it, and it negates the iman in in Allah on the last day. So so he says as for uh, so he mentions he says as for its uh, from its foundation the the foundation of your iman yeah the asl the the foundation of iman or from the completeness of your iman. So then he says, however, if if the love if the love they have for the for the disbelievers um, is 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 a love in terms of helping their cause their way and and in their disbelief. So if any if it comes under this helping them with their disbelief, their, their ways, their their the things that they do, um, etc., then he says the Sheikh says that this takes that person out of the fold of Islam. It takes him out of the fold of Islam. He says as for if it was just just love on his own without helping, supporting, and aiding, and all the rest of it, then he says this is considered a person is considered to have. Um, uh, has a has a his iman goes down. It, it, his, his iman decreases. His iman decreases, and he is a, a, a sinner. He's a sinner, fasik, fisk, and he is and his iman is weak. He's weak. It's considered like this. So so just to distinguish both of those. So we find somebody aiding them, and helping them in their cause and everything physically. You know, whatever it might be well with their wealth, with their whatever it is. Helping them, supporting them, aiding them, and having love for them like this, then that takes the person out of the fold of Islam. If it's just love on its own with nothing else, then the Sheikh says it's considered that that person has weak iman and faith. So the Sheikh continues and he says, Kila in a hadhi al ayatu nuzilat fi abi ubaidata fi abi ubaidata ibn al jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. لما قتل أباه يوم بدر لأن أباه كان على الكفر وكان يريد وكان يريد أن يقتل ابنه أبا عبيدة فقتله أبو عبيدة رضي الله عنه لأنه عدو الله ولم يمنعه أنه أبوه لم لم يمنعه ذلك من قتله غضبا لله سبحانه وتعالى so um, in this paragraph here, the Sheikh mentioned, he says, and it was mentioned that uh, that these are uh, this ayah, you know, the one that we read, the long one, that we uh, the Sheikh's explaining for us. It says it was it was revealed uh, in terms of Abi Ubaidah and what happened. So uh, at the time, and the Sheikh explains what happened. So it says Abi Ubaidah, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, when when he uh, killed his father. Uh, 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 um, in on the day of Badr, in that battle, he says because his father was upon kufr disbelief, didn't accept Islam, and he want and his father wanted to kill him. His father wanted to kill his son. That's what it was. So his father wanted to kill his son, but uh, Abu Ubaida killed his father in the battle because he's enemy of Allah, and that didn't prevent him. That didn't prevent him from his father, you know, as in killing his father. That didn't prevent him. Uh, uh, and then the Sheikh mentioned that didn't prevent him because of obviously the, uh, the uh, Allah's anger upon upon the disbelievers. So we'll just continue. So the Sheikh continues and says, "Qawluhu Taala ulaik ay alladina yabtaiduna an mahabbat an mahabbatin wa mawaddatin min man had Allah wa Rasula." So we're just con uh, continuing with the explanation of the long ayah that we read earlier on, which I mentioned to you, brothers, you can have a look at as a reference as you go through it. So ulaika, those. So he says, he says, i.e., uh, those who um, uh, stay far away and uh, maintain a distance uh, uh, from from those who uh, oppose Allah and His Messenger. And stay far away from from them, and also in terms of having love for them. So stay far away from having love for them, and then supporting them or helping them. Those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, and fight against Allah and His Messenger. And then he continues says, "Qawluhu Taala." So next, uh, we're just going through this ayah now. Katabafi qulubihi mul iman. 
اي اثبت الله في قلوبهم ورسخ الله في قلوبهم الايمان so uh, كتب في قلوبهم الايمان هي as the sheikh explains it means that uh, those muslims the muslims that allah has made iman firm in their hearts and deeply rooted iman in their hearts and then he continues qawluhu ta'ala wa ayyadahum bi ruhin minhu wa yudkhiluhum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar so the sheikh says what does it mean so ayyadahum he mentions the um uh, part of what we call mustar is at ta'yid and he says its meaning is to strengthen something so allah strengthens them so he says allah strengthen them with the ruh and so the shaykh goes and say he's going to explain there's a, there's different meanings for ruh so he's going to explain all that for to us as well so he says there's a few there's different meanings for ruh depending on the context and he says from them is the soul so soul ruh soul uh, that gives life right that that's life uh, and from it is um, revelation al wahi so they mentions kama fi qawli ta'ala وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا So, and, and from it is revelation as well. So, revelation. This can be referred to as Ruh. <coughs> and from it is Jibreel alayhi salam. Also, as mentioned, as we all know, Ruh al-Qudus. That's Jibreel alayhi salam. That, that, that's, uh, that's when, when, whenever you hear this, Ruh al-Qudus, it means Jibreel alayhi salam. وَالرُوحُ amin Same thing, Ruh al-Ameen. And then there's another ayah here. Qala ta'ala qul nazzalahu ruhu al-qudusi min rabbika bil-haqqi yuthabbit al-lazina amanu wahudun wa bushra lil-muslimin. Al-Nahl. Um, so if we go to uh, Al-Nahl, just quickly so we can understand. Verse 102. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu ruhu al-qudus, Jibra'il has brought has brought it, the Qur'an down from your Lord with truth that it may make firm and strengthen the faith of those who believe and as a guidance and glad tidings to, to those who have submitted to Allah as Muslims. Then the Shaykh says also, قَالَ, uh, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحَ الْأَمِينَ وَمِنْهَا مَا فِي هَذِي الْآيَةِ وَهِيَ قُوَّةِ So uh, then the Shaykh continues, so he says, فَأَيَّدَهُمْ بِرُوحٍ مِّنْهُ أي بقوة منه سبحانه وتعالى قوة إيمان في الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويدخلهم جنات جمع جنة والجنة في في اللغة البستان سمي جنة لأنه مجتن لأنه مجتن بالأشجار أي مستطر ومغطى بالأشجار الملطفة لأن الجنة ذلال وأشجار وأنهار وقصور وَعَلَاهَا وَسَقْفُ وَعَلَاهَا وَسَقْفُهَا عَرْشِ الرَّحْمَانِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَلَى So, then we move on to the next idea. وَيُدْخِلُهُمْ جِنَّاتِ We enter them into gardens. Uh, and the Shaykh, uh, just before he mentions that, he says, so, uh, where Allah mentioned, فَأَيَّدَهُمْ بِرُوحٍ مِّنْهُ It means, he strengthened them. He strengthened the Muslimin. Strengthened the Mu'mineen, the believers. Strengthened them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in their iman in the dunya and the akhirah uh, uh, in the dunya so strengthen the iman in the dunya and in the akhirah enter he will enter them into gardens and so the shaykh just explains a little bit here he says garden so in the language uh, he says in the language obviously we know jannat means paradise but he says in the language it means gardens and he goes and it's, it was is called named gardens or jannah because it's um, you know covered in you know, trees, uh, wrapped and covered in trees and, you know, um, this sort of thing. Yeah. So trees and shrubbage and all, uh, these kinds of things. And um, and he also says, because Jannah is, you know, has a shade, it has trees, um, uh, you know, it has rivers, it has palaces, castles. Um, uh, and the highest, the highest, the ceiling of Jannah is where... Uh, and just above, so uh, just uh, so the ceiling of Jannah it meets the throne of Ar Rahman, the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Say so continues then, and he says, "Qalu Taala, tajri min tahtiha al-anhar khalidin fiha, ay baqin fiha la 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 yitahwalun anha." Qala Taala, "La yabghun anha hiwala." 
لا يخافون من موت ولا يخافون من أحد يخرج يخرج يخرجهم ويطردهم مثل ما في الدنيا قد يكون الإنسان في الدنيا في قصور لكن لا 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 يسلم من الموت فيخرج فيخرج منها ولا يسلم من الأعداء يتسلطون عليه ويخرجونه الإنسان في الدنيا دائما خائف. So then the Sheikh mentions, so he mentions another ayah. So you know, there, you know, uh, in the garden, in paradise, there be rivers that flow, right? Below, as you know, there's be rivers, rivers that flow. And 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 here, لا يبغون أنها حيولا from Surah to Kaf, verse 108, towards the end. Um, also mentioned that they won't desire to leave or they won't fear anything when they're in paradise. And when they're in paradise, right? And so the Sheikh explains a bit more detail. He says they won't fear death. They won't fear um, anyone that uh, they won't fear anybody that will throw them out of the paradise and uh, you know uh, throw them out and banish them from there, like what we find in the dunya. So, if, for example, so he says, like we find in the dunya. For example, a person uh, in the dunya, he he's in he's in castles. He might be in a castle, a big house, whatever it is. From the dunya, and he isn't protected from death uh, or uh, being thrown out of it, or or or, or having to leave it, um, his place of uh, abode, for example, uh, and he's not protected from uh, from enemies, from the enemies that may um, overpower him and then throw him out, or whatever they'll do with him, for example. So he says the people in the dunya. Are always scared, or you know, they fear. They fear things that will could happen and might happen, right? They fear. But in paradise, there'll be none of this. Then the Shaykh continues, says, "Qalu Taala, radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhu. Lama aghdabu akriba ahum min al kufar wa adhum wa adhum manhum Allah al rida minhu subhanahu wa taala jaza an lahum, fahum." أوذوا بإغلابهم لأقاربهم الكفار وعوذوا برضا وعوذوا برضا الله سبحانه وتعالى رضي الله عنه ورضوا عنه. so uh, so this uh, part of the the verse that we uh, that the Sheikh is uh, explaining to us is uh, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah and Allah and this ayah was revealed at the time and there was a lot of um, um, where the uh, mushrikeen, uh, they were, you know, causing trouble and, you know, causing pressure and hurting, you know, the Muslims at the time in Makkah. So, um, so, the, uh, so this ayah was revealed and part of this ayah was to do with that, that Allah uh, made clear to them that Allah is pleased with them and that, and so, and they of course are pleased with Allah, even though the their their relatives and the people that they knew there the ones from the mushrikeen were angry with them then the shaykh continues and says qulu ta'ala ulaika hizbullah ay jama'atullah wa amma al-kuffar fa hum hizb ash-shaytan kama qala Allah ta'ala anhum ulaika hizb ash-shaytan al-mujadala ay jama'atu ash-shaytan wa ansar ash-shaytan amma ha'ula fa hum ansar ar-rabb so then the shaykh mentions the next part that follows he says, Ula'ika Hezbollah. They are those, uh, they are the party of Allah, or those, they are the party of Allah, or those are the party of Allah. I.e., they're the group of Allah, they're, they're Allah's group, they're part, of, they're part of Allah's group. As for the kuffar, the disbelievers, they are the group, they are part of the group of the shaitan. They're the party of shaitan. As Allah, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, in another ayah, in another surah, Al-Mujadla verse 19, they are the party of the shaitan. In another ayah regarding the kuffar. Uh, and, and, and they're the helpers of the shaitan. As for the Muslims, the believers, the mu'mineen, they are the helpers of Allah. They're the party of Allah. So the Shaykh says, فَهَذِي الْمَسْأَلَةَ تَتَعَلَّقُوا بِعَدَاوَةِ الْكُفَارِ وَعَدْمِ مُوَالَاتِهِمْ وَهِيَا لَا تَقْتَذِي أَنَّنَا تَقَاتِئَ الْكُفَارِ فِي الْأُمُورِ وَالْمُنَافَعِ 
الدنيويه بل يستثني او يستثنى من ذلك امور so this is very important to, uh, uh, that the sheikhs mentioned this and uh, we, we and uh, alhamdulillah we've arrived to this to help us because the sheikhs as he says this affair um, it's connected to um, or related to um, the uh, the hostility the, the kufar have and and, and 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 having that hostileness and separation from them um um and and you know not helping them and having love for them and aiding them in that which harms the muslims for example okay and then the sheikh mentions this is very important to pay heed here because somebody might say oh well hang on a second this is well how is how we supposed to call people or the people to islam you know uh, what sort of example is this but well, the sheikh explains it nicely here um he says but it doesn't this is but it this doesn't mean that you cut the kufar off from those of, or you cut the kufar off from those uh, things that benefit that have a uh, that have a benefit in the dunya and he says there are some exceptions there are some exceptions which he goes through there's exceptions here uh, to this and he explains this this will be um, the second part of the lesson so uh, this is why we split it in two so we understand the first part and inshallah next week we'll go through the second part which goes through some of the uh, um, uh, exceptions to the rule. So we've got the general understanding of what, what, what's being said here, and we under, we've understood all that, alhamdulillah, with all the evidences in the explanation of the shaykh. Uh, uh, may Allah uh, reward the shaykh and uh, preserve him. However, um, um, the second part is to, to, to discuss the exceptions, because um, uh, you, we can still... In, in summary, we will go into it, inshallah, but in summary, you know, as long as uh, if there's a benefit between the Muslims and the disbelievers and it doesn't harm the Muslims and there's several different factors that will be covered here, then then you, you can support and aid in terms of supporting and things like this. Uh, as, as the Sheikh has mentioned, you don't completely cut off, like as in it's completely two different worlds, but the Sheikh will explain in more detail and it help us understand the whole affair and have a good understanding of what Al-Wala al, al and what al bara actually means and that we understand understand it properly so uh, we'll inshallah continue um uh, next week ta'ala and we'll go through this section as you can see here the the uh, uh, exception so there's one two three four five six seven There's uh, se uh, seven or eight. We'll go through all of them. There's quite uh, there's quite a few exceptions there, and you can see they've been discussed in a lot of detail as well. So just to give us a good understanding of the whole affair. So inshallah, uh, we'll stop there, bidin la taala, and we will uh, resume our lesson, uh, inshallah, next Friday, same time, and I'll see you brothers there. Barakallahu fiqum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh